Three. I'm Kendra, and I am here to uh, announce a, well, actually an unannounced brand new IP that we are going to be showcasing a trailer for right now, and then we will look into it further. So, trailer. <laughs> <laughs> And we are back. Uh, so I am up here today with a very special guest, uh, Ishi San, the producer, director, and founder of Grezzo. Uh, many of you may recognize his name. He worked on Final Fantasy 1, 2, and 3, as well as Final Fantasy 11 Online. In addition to that, he worked on all of the Mana series, and he actually developed the legendary creatures Moogles and Chocobos, uh, the pixel art and the uh, design of them. In addition to that, he created the job class system that is now very well known in Final Fantasy franchise. So uh, without further ado, Ishii-san has some words to share with us about this new IP. Hi. Eva is the producer and director of Ishii. I'm Ishii, the producer and director of Ishii. I'm Ishii, the producer and director of Grazzo for Ever Oasis. I'm really excited to um, show you guys what Ever Oasis is about today. Ever Oasis takes place in the desert. The main character is a um, leader of the Oasis, and with his partner, Water Spirit, he goes on adventures to, in hopes to develop the Oasis. And there are many challenges in the Oasis. The main character is a leader of the Oasis, and in and the main character um, develops himself while he overcomes these challenges that, um, and in the, through the, uh, the friendships that he cultivated. And um, through it all, he finds his own path. <laughs> Um, even in the real world, I think we often come across things that are invisible to the eye, um, things that can only be found through experiences, challenges, and um, friendships and relationships that we cultivate with others. And I think it's really important that um, when it comes to things that are so essential to us, to when we move forward with them, um, to ask ourselves questions like, what can I do or what should I do? And then so with that in mind um, and in the underlying theme, I have been developing Ever Oasis. 
ぜひ皆さんにネバーオイスの暴言を通してその思いを感じていただければと願っております。And then, so I hope you can、um, share the, the sentiment that I feel towards this game through the adventures of Ever Oasis. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Ishii. That's incredible. We're so excited to show this game to the world. So, without further ado,、uh, why don't we jump right in? All right. So, here we are. So, we are out in the desert. Uh, Tefu is the main character. You can actually play as male or female, but we're playing as male.、Um, over there, you can see a giant pot, and that is actually a dungeon that we're going to check out later. But first of all, this is actually the entrance to our oasis. Oh, wait, no. So I, in the、I'm、game, going you off actually、stage. create、oh. an oasis for the water、off. spirit Isna, and、um, she helps you, you start it. And then So, we have various tribes in the game. These are called newts. They're my favorite things ever.、Uh, if you talk to them, they just kind of tweet at you. So, they're kind of like owls slash <laughs> penguins? Yeah, yeah, they are. They are actually penguin owl、uh, hybrids. So, we're going to run right over here into the inner portion of the oasis. And、uh, one of the really awesome things about this game is that you can actually、uh, you build these shops called bloom booths. So, here's one. And,、um, What you do is you build it and then you keep it stocked. And rather than buying equipment,、um, like in many RPGs, this is doing something completely unique.、Um, you actually stock up these shops with duodems, which is the currency. And let's see, let's give her some stuff because she doesn't have anything to sell. And then the shops、uh, sell the inventory. Then you collect the duodems that they get from wanderers who come into the oasis buying their,、um, their wares. Right, because your, your role in this oasis, in this community that you're building, is you're kind of the, the overseer of everything. So you're the one、mm -hmm. actually stocking the shop. So you're. Underlings can kind of sell it to other people. Yeah, yeah, exactly.、Um, real quick, I'm going to run over here and show everybody Isna. So, over to the right is the little tree house, and that's,、uh, that's where my, my home is.、Um, I created the oasis, but that's my home. But here's Isna, just so you guys can see what she looks like. And she helps me、um, level things up and gives advice and、um, is just your partner throughout the game. Uh, as you can see, the loading screen has a newt. Cute newt. I love that. The character design of this game is so incredible. I mean, you can actually see, you know, back to the, you know, Chocobos and、uh, Rabbites from、oh, Secret of Mana,、sure. which is honestly my favorite game of all time. To, so to have、mm -hmm. <coughs> Mr. Ishii at the helm of this game after making Secret of Mana <coughs> and Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, it's. I'm so psyched about this.、Game. Yeah, it's incredible.、Um, so,、uh, it, as you can see above each of the shops, okay, so the, the little newt, newts are actually loaded, so they go in and they spend tons of duodems, so it's really good to have them in your oasis.、Um, and then, as you can see, the little speech bubble with the duodem above it, or、um, sorry, the bloom booth above it, is the duodems, and I can collect it with my wind ability, like so. And then it adds to my currency, which you see in the upper right. And then that's used to、uh, build new bloom booths. So we are gonna. Doot, doot. And the wind this... oh, I'm sorry, you go for it.、First. I was gonna say the wind ability is actually really special to the children of the Great Tree. It is, yeah. So、um, each character that you collect in the game, so you will build parties in the game, and each character has their own special ability.、Uh, Tethu, the main character, has the wind ability, and you use it actually to solve puzzles later on in the dungeons. Um, but right now, I'm actually in the Bloom Booth placement screen, and I am going to build a juice shop. So, Tethu is actually,、uh, there are various tribes throughout the game, and Tethu is what's called a seedling. And with other seedlings,、uh, they're actually, so they have, as you can see, she kind of brings her heart out, and it's, it's a seed that、uh, is then planted into the earth, and then Tethu uses the duodems to grow the Bloom Booth. So, we're going to see what that looks like. What's really cool though is、uh, as Tethu is a chosen seedling, Tethu is capable of growing an entire oasis. So, most seedlings can grow these bloom booths, but if they're chosen seedlings, then they're able to grow an entire gigantic oasis, which can、right. also become larger and 
Well, what they've done with the Oasis theme is so cool because you're in this desert, this harsh, unforgiving environment with enemies who try to attack you. So Tefu creates this this oasis, and everything here is based on plants, and obviously the duodems are are the moisture that the seeds need. Mm -hmm. So the theme that they've put together just kind of runs through the whole game. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely in keeping with the theme, and um, as people may well notice, it's. Um, it's got a lot of Egyptian inspiration, a lot of the character names also, and um, here is Mira, and she's actually from the Draw tribe. Uh, she's going to be in our party a little bit later. Uh, the Draw tribe is a dragon lizard tribe. They're very demure. Um, let's see, here's Jethro. He's really, he's really cool. He's like. Um, he's just got a really chill personality and he's another seedling. But basically, um, as you go through the game, you want to get more and more wanderers to come to your oasis. Uh, the more wanderers you have, the more it will thrive, the more bloom boosts you can grow, and your oasis will level up and expand. I'm just going to say hi to one more of these. So, uh, Yes. All right, so then I got, you got to fight something. I do. I do have to fight something. So in addition to uh, the oasis element that you that I've shown you here, we also are able to explore dungeons. Um, so you can explore the outer world areas, and then we also have dungeons. So I'm actually going to switch real quick over to this one. And there we go. <laughs> oh. And we got it loaded up. Oh, nope. we need to switch to there the we go. There, there we go. Cool. All right, so here we are inside the dungeon. So uh, let's take a look around. Just load it up from a save point. You have a party here. You have three yes. party members. Yeah, so parties are a, a huge part of this game. Um, and as you can see, I have people from different tribes here. I have Mira, and then I have Roto, who's also a seedling. And each of them has their own special ability. And as you make your way through the dungeons, you have to uh, use all of their abilities to actually solve the puzzles and advance through the dungeon. So as you see, I just used my wind ability, which is called Green Gale. Um, and now I'm going to switch to Mira, and she's going to use her really cool spear that looks like a flower and harvest from this petrified cacti. Sweet. And so what I really love about this game, it's got something really unique going on. I mean, not only is the aesthetic amazing and completely fresh, but you also are able to, you have the oasis and you can, you can work on that, you can make it larger, but you can also switch, you can actively switch between your characters during right. battle as well. And I just think that's amazing because so rarely uh, do you play RPGs that have all of these unique elements coming together like this? And oh, all right, so there's an enemy. Oh, he's so, hidden in there. Yeah, that yeah. Works. So they hide in the pots and then they they smash you. And uh, Roto has some cool things going on. So when I press X, um, I do a slower but stronger attack, and when I press A, I'm doing faster attacks. As you can see, I can roll to dodge. Oh, come back here. Come back here. I have a real soft spot for uh, action adventure RPGs that show damage numbers. Yes. So I, I love being able to you know upgrade my weapons and then see the increase in the numbers every time I hit. And it it I is love it. so satisfying. I know. I have to agree. So you have these three characters, and you're able to, to solve puzzles, actually switch between them because they have unique abilities. Mm -hmm. So obviously, only uh, uh, your main character can do the wind move, mm -hmm. whereas you know you can uh, switch to Mira, and she has other abilities that other characters don't have. Yeah, exactly. Um, another thing that people will notice here is um, I am harvesting and collecting things from all the pots that I'm breaking and whatnot. And you actually uh, you gather all of these items. And as I was saying earlier, rather than buying equipment from shops, you um, you actually take these items and you you use a what's called synthesize in the game, and that's inside your little treehouse room, and. Um, and you do that to create and basically grow your uh, weapons and your equipment. It's really cool. So as you can see, when I walk up to this, Tethu's like, I don't know what to do. I, I can't do this. But you see the little spear that he's thinking about. So clearly, Mira needs to solve this one for us. And she's going to lift that so that we can get up here. Oh. There's definitely an element of uh, puzzle solving and strategy when you're building your team here. because. 
if you didn't have Senora in your party, mm -hmm. you would just have to come back to the dungeon, build your party around that in order to solve puzzles that you might have missed. Yeah, exactly. Um, you you definitely find at times you'll you'll uh, you'll find a dungeon and you'll be like, oh, I I need you know this kind of ability that I don't have yet, and so then you go you recruit wanderers. Um, and you actually go out, you get side quests in the game as well. So you'll get side quests from people living within your oasis, and they'll be like, oh, I heard this rumor about so-and-so living, you know, over yonder. And then you go wandering out into the desert, you fight monsters, and then you find the people that they're talking about and recruit them into, oh, into your party. So as you can see, I tried to get through, but there is something blocking the way yet again. So now so, Mira. Right. So Roto has an ability to transform into a little seed. Yeah, yeah, the pellet ability. So he turns into pellet, and then he rolls. And now he has access to this. So let's try that again. So anytime you see a lotus flower within uh, the dungeon settings, he is able to use that particular pellet ability. I absolutely love the overall theme of this game. It's just so organic and <laughs> yes, alive. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, uh, as, as everybody heard from Ishii-san's message, uh, the developers have just put so much heart into this game, and it's it's clear the detail in the game and just the absolute passion behind the design of this game is like very clear. All right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I... What's up? Actually, I think we need to load... Oh, no, here we go. There, see? Even, even when you've done the puzzles, you can sometimes <laughs> get confused by the puzzles. Particularly early in the morning. All right. So we went through the wall, and we pressed a little flower that caused the flow of the sand to stop. So now we can cross this chasm that was impassable earlier. They have these multiple, multi, multi-room puzzles <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that you have to think. I mean, they're they're not they're not like easy puzzles. I mean, you're always going to have to kind of look around the entire environment and figure out what you're Definitely, to do. yeah, for sure. All right, so okay, so we've got a stronger enemy here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I'm going to get these guys first. Come back here. Come back. Hiya. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Guys, that guy hits pretty hard. OK. And That's as you can see, I have a lock on ability. So when I lock on, it makes it much easier. And then it directs my party members to also attack this guy. Come on. Boop. And Mira, um, actually, her spear uh, is really strong against these enemies. So I'm going to switch to her for now. And that's another thing you'll find. Um, you'll want to switch your characters depending upon uh, the enemies because right. the different weapons have different strengths. Ooh. And right now, oh my goodness. Six damage. You, my friends, are going down. I got that armadillo. He's really the strong. Spiky Dillo. Yeah. Spiky Dillo. So, Kendra, you actually were able to localize the E3 version of this game, so you came up with all these names. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, I did, and I, working directly um, with the developer and with the translator, Yoriko, uh, we really did our best to keep super close to their intent. So. Um, Egyptian-inspired names, and then the, um, like, many of the characters have Egyptian-inspired names, and then the um, enemies have kind of creative names. So we, mm -hmm. yeah, we definitely tried to keep in that. Um, so did we mention kind of the spiky Dillo there? He's not necessarily a bad guy. We just beat the crap out of him. But yeah. he's actually kind of corrupted by mm. this this force. Yeah, so so the, the overarching story is basically you start out and your older brother is showing you how to create an oasis and then this mysterious thing only known as chaos comes in and sweeps your brother away and then you are kind of landed in the middle, middle of the desert and Isana finds you and then that's where you create your oasis. Um, so you you don't know what's happened to your brother and you're fighting off this chaos and these little plants are actually chaos plants as well huh. um, but the chaos is taking over the entire desert and it's also taking over um, the little the cute little creatures that live there and turning them into monsters so when we when we battle them they uh, they turn back into the original form 
so we just got the, we beat the spiky dello, we got, we opened up the chest and we got a key, so we're gonna go in here now and see what lies beyond. Oh boy. You don't have a lot of health, so. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, we're just, we're gonna just do the best we can. All right. Hopefully not get annihilated, because this dude does not look super friendly. Oh my gosh. And he is not happy we're here. <laughs> and as you can see again, the the design is just beautiful. Yeah. I love it. It's and like the love corruption like coming from yeah, the, like, the Yeah, yeah, like something is clearly not right here. Alright, so we're gonna lock on to boss dude. Oh my gosh. And this is a boss, so he deals some pretty significant damage. So we're gonna Pack away at this. Oh. And um, another thing I actually was talking about earlier. So as you can see, um, Mira fights with the spear. Roto fights with a, the bola, and um, Tethu fights with a sword. But later, later on in the game, uh, you will actually see there are also going to be magic weapons and ranged weapons. Very cool. So, so Roto's bolas are, are somewhat ranged. They kind of fly in a circle out around. Yeah, them. exactly. And his bola is actually extremely um, effective against this enemy oh. who really wants us to leave. <laughs> oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh goodness! All right. That's okay. That's alright. We got this. We will overcome. Ooh. Got him down to half health. I know, it's... Whew, oh. As you can see, I'm doing a lot of dodging. It's pretty important in this battle. Yeah! It's really cool Whoop. how you're showcasing yeah, there we go. <laughs> the, every character in order oh. to just attack this guy. Mm -hmm. and it just shows right. how in-depth this real-time combat and all the strategy is. It's yeah. really cool. It is. It's very engaging. I just, I just love it. It's honestly this this game is everything I've wanted in an RPG. It's got really strong storyline. <laughs> it's got strong enemies. Um, it's got the the puzzle solving that I love. Yeah. The kind of the world building of the Oasis. The world where building. It's got all of these really things. interesting yeah. character designs. I just it's awesome. <laughs> oh, we're so close. As you can see, when he crashes down. Uh, kind of a shock wave goes out, and then I have to use the Green Gale ability to clear this out so I can access. Oh, you're so oh close. Oh my gosh, so close. Yes. Nice. Well done. Yes. <sighs> Not really satisfying. That was really close. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Thank yeah, you. seriously. Thank so you. now that you've defeated him, the chaos disappeared. Mm hmm From him specifically. So he is going to tell us a little bit here. But basically, yeah, he, um, he was under the influence of the chaos, and he was taken over by it. And um, he was betrayed, actually. So we, we helped him out by beating <laughs> him up. That's what we did. <laughs> And now he can rest. Yeah. Now he can rest, finally. He's probably tired. He's just been like hanging out, waiting for someone to come beat him up. <laughs> Ooh, so you got something from that too. Yeah. Which is going to help. Got energized quartz. Awesome. All right, so that is it for that. Um, we can actually hop back in and explore just a little bit more. Yeah. Now that we showed it. you the dungeon. So, I'm going to boop around in here. Boop, boop. So over here we have an inn. Um, we won't be showing that today. This is actually a save point. Doop, doop, doop. This buddy uh, helps you with your equipment later on. You have a few ways that you deal with your equipment in this game, but I won't go into that so as not to spoil it. Come here. Oh, OK. <laughs> it's like, that's all I got <laughs> just for wanted you. to say hi to you. Um, the newts are really cute, too, because they will sometimes, uh, they'll, they'll 
give you different greetings. So some of them will wave to you, and some of them will bow to you. Let's see if we can find one that bows. Another really cool thing in the game is that you'll have uh, night and daytime mechanics. So uh, when the sun sets, you can't actually stock the shops anymore. Um, and they, they close for the night. And then in the, um, in the nighttime when you go wandering out into the desert, the, uh, the enemies that you encounter are a little bit tougher, a little bit scarier. You have like some snakes that kind of swim in the sand. We actually go up here. We have a garden area up here. As you can see, um, the sun is starting to set, super pretty. And you can actually gather some of these berries. So again, the, uh, the foraging elements in this game are really important. You want to always be collecting things. And then down here is the little garden area. Boop, boop. And let's see if it can get dark. Oh, it looks it's like the sun setting. Yeah, and then in addition to the bloom booths, you, oh, there we go. It's night time. Uh, you can grow these little uh, plants. So this one is a singing shrub. Over here, we have TC Treat and the Melody Tasty Wheel. Treat. And I'm actually going to show you guys this because we have time. Oh, that's so adorable. Yeah, he just like, jumps up on it. Um, so you can interact with some of the things. And as well, you can, uh, you can plant certain things that will help the, uh, the revenue within the bloom booths. So when you're planting them, um, you're actually doing it strategically. Right, because so. you started this oasis with just with a very limited number of buildings, and you've kind of built those out to attract people mm -hmm. to your oasis. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So here we are at nighttime. Jethro's hanging out. This you know, house is looking really magical right now. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Yeah, and as you can see, there are banners that have very unique designs on them. You've got like ancient ruins going on. Do do. And. That rainbow in the background. Yeah, wow. so that is actually, so the, the inner portion, as you can see, the tree roots there, um, the inner portion of the oasis is founded in this massive tree that is grown along with the water spirit. And, um, and the rainbow is indicative of the oasis, uh, the health of the oasis. So we have a pretty hearty oasis going on here. I'd actually really like to show more of the dungeon, but I will need to load up some save data if we can actually do that. Load up some save data. <laughs> eh, maybe not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well. Maybe we don't have time for the dungeon. I don't know. Yeah, the thing is, we <laughs> we went through that first dungeon faster than we anticipated. We really yeah, did. We did. Yeah, yeah. I did. I was expecting okay. the battle to take yeah. just a bit longer. All right. Well, <laughs> we are so excited to have been able to share this new IP with the world again. That's mm -hmm. Ever Oasis action adventure RPG for the Nintendo 3DS. Uh, and that's going to be it for this segment. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned for some other hotness.